Welcome back to MMA Sucker Fight fans. My name is Nate Freeman. I'm joined now by the one-time Bantamweight, UFC Bantamweight title challenger, and more importantly, a one-time mom, uh, Alexis Davis. Alexis, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Feeling good. Glad to hear it. Um, you have a fight coming up against Julia Stolyarenko um, here in two weeks on February 5th. Um, talk to me about how you're feeling and um, give me your thoughts on how training camp is going and all of that. Uh, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. I, you know, was hoping to get fight a little bit sooner and then I was hoping for a little bit later. I kind of like got smashed between having to diet on the holidays. But mm. <laughs> other than that, I was just excited to get back in there. And, you know, we've been very fortunate with everything going on. But the ups and downs of COVID and everything that the UFC has been, you know, fantastic to all of the fighters. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that... Um, especially dieting over the holidays. That's one of the main reasons, well, other than my lack of athletic ability. Um, <laughs> one, one, of the, one of the main reasons I'm not a fighter, um, and among other things, but that I just that's something I can't imagine. Food is, um, to me, tied with the holidays so tightly that I just can't let it go. Well, I um, say that I fight, you know, just to keep in shape because I love eating so much. Yeah, that makes sense. That's fair. <laughs> Um, so talk to me about, uh, Julia as an opponent and how you see the fight going, um, overall. Well, she kind of reminds me of almost like my old self a lot, you know, her style. She's very much, a uh, brawl them out, throwing punches to the wind, like everything kind of goes fighter. So, you know, stylistically, uh, I think that's great, but just things that, that have to tie in with, like, I also know she's, like, well-versed on the ground. So that's, uh, you know, you kind of got to be aware of all the risks that you take, whether it's from standing or from the ground. But um, I see her definitely trying to push forward and pushing the face, but, you know, just creating different angles and um, using, you know, my clinch game, my, my takedowns, and, and, you know, I'm able to utilize all my weapons for this. Yeah, and she's won almost all of her fights by armbar. Um, is there any particular um, special work that's being done on that, knowing that she likes to get to that position? Well, yeah, that's one of the things that we have worked on. But, you know, in my sense, knowing that she knows that I know, that she knows that that may be something to go for. You know, there's obviously, there's, you know, a lot of things that uh, – we have trained and kind of worked on that, you know, that she might be trying to secure, you know, whether or not it goes to the ground. That makes sense. Um, so I know changing gears a little bit. Um, I know that one of your main causes that you support is um, childhood cancer. I know your niece um, Hayden um, lost her battle with cancer um, back in May. Um, and I know that um, basically a week after you announced that she had passed, that you had a fight coming up um, and you were starting to get into training camp and everything. Did you have a have any problems last camp just sort of um, dealing with that sort of loss in your family? And did that sort of make it hard to get going? Did that affect your performance at all? You know, it it. I I am that type of person that, you know, taking that, that fight on a little bit shorter notice, but, you know, I, you know, it was a, a great um, opportunity and, you know, I, it gave me something else to focus on. It did. Whether, you know, obviously I know my, my coaches a lot had some concerns for, you know, obviously that was, it was a long fight out battle with my niece and you know it was hard but you know you you know uh win or lose I knew that you know I just it was something that you know I kind of wanted to strive for and you know it was a great card how you man I just wanted to be on the same card in ATS I'm not gonna lie <laughs> you know that was pretty badass <laughs> yeah that's fair um yeah that's I mean not only just for um the bump and pay-per-view numbers that having him has having him as a name um, I'm sure helped you but also just seeing him fight 
on fight night, I'm sure was a big, you know, big thing to see him fight. Yeah. Um, so um, talk to me in since that's happened and you've had a little bit of time to process. Um, talk to me a little bit about um, some of your favorite memories that um, you've had as a family and how the family is getting along in um, sort of coping with um, Hayden's loss. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, like everybody, you, you have good days, you have bad days. It's, it's, it's been a, a huge struggle for me to be as far away. You know, my family's East coast, Canada, you know, I'm all the way out in, in California and with a lot of the restrictions that are going on right now. So it's, it's been a bit of a emotional battle. You know, you can, it's hard because you can only be, you know, you'd only be there so much with a phone call or, you know, with text and, but, uh, you know, that we just kind of taking things day by day and, you know, it just, I try to think of the, see, I'm just thinking of things right now that make me smile, like the, the silly things and ridiculous things that, you know, like that she used to do that make you laugh and, you know, I try to think of the, the best and that, you know, she's, she's looking down on us. Yeah. Um, so as, um, and that's one I, thing, that's one, uh, ahead, probably yeah. not many people even know, but before every single fight, I used to ask her, I'm like, <laughs> ridiculous, but I'm like, okay, what color do I paint my toes? You know, <laughs> always she said blue. So, you know, I've always like, dedicated you know ever since then you know my last competition i will this fight for sure i will have blue toenails <laughs> just and a little like you know tribute to her i look forward to seeing it um <laughs> talk to me um talk to me a little bit about what um the general public maybe doesn't know about childhood cancer and what we can do to sort of help um work to put an end to um, that terrible disease you know there's been uh some great organizations like you know like eight man strong they reached out to me you know and they you know sent me some stuff and put some things just to get you know uh for people to know you know people don't even understand like like once she was diagnosed that you know they kind of think oh you know okay she kind of went, you know, haven't heard from a while, but it's an ongoing battle. Like when she was diagnosed, she was diagnosed at stage four, you know, people kind of think it just kind of, you know, goes away, but there's so many ups and downs and it gets harder and harder each time that like people don't understand the amount that of pressure that it, like my sister took that time off. She, you know, just stayed home and the amount of like healthcare and, you know, driving out to the hospitals and, you know, they were, they're driving all the way out to Michigan to try different experimental procedures. And, you know, as a, as a mother, you know, even as myself, I can see, you just try everything that you can to, to kind of fight for that battle. And, you know, uh, it's, yeah, you know, I don't think people kind of understand like all the, the hardships that kind of come with it, you know, especially as a, as a parent that you see. And when my sister, when my niece was diagnosed, my sister was pregnant at the time, you know, she, I remember actually, and I remember when she went back in remission, when she went to go uh, get the bone marrow, we both sat up in six, sick kids hospital up in Toronto. And we were both pregnant at the time, you know, just, just trying to, you know, comfort and, and be there she went through the whole procedure so you know i think it's just getting you know um recognition to any of the the healthcare providers and the doctors and nurses and not and even like the amount of uh just any like the pediatric care like there's people that come in that just volunteer to be like hey you know i'm gonna sit here and play with the kids and you know do puzzles and games and just something to distract them from having to sit in the hospital 24 hours a day, you know, for like sometimes, you know, months on end, you know, I think, you know, 
we don't give enough credit to those people. And I really, you know, want to reach out and say, you know, thank you. You know, you know, you may not been, may have not been our battle that won, but you know, there's another kid that's down the line and, and they're still fighting. Thank you for sharing that. That's, um, that's helpful to give perspective to those who haven't really had to experience that, especially um, with childhood cancer. It's even tougher, especially for parents to deal with and all of that. Um, so yeah, like I said, thanks for sharing that. Um, switching gears a, a little bit again, um, one of your main um, drivers for continuing to be a fighter is to be a motivation to um, people and especially women. Um, you on your website, you talk about how you went from being um, a 200 pound teenager to fighting for the world championship. Um, so can you just sort of explain a little bit more about um, what motivated, you know, what motivated you to make that change? And um, just talk to me a little bit about that whole process in general, how you went from um, being an overweight teenager to where you are today. Yeah, you know what? And teenage years are uh, are tough years to begin with. For sure. You know, they, oh, <laughs> I hear some rattling at the door. Yeah. Okay, okay, buddy. That's your high boys. Well, that's your high boys. Like that. There's there's my monster right there. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. Just teenage years are hard enough to begin with and to struggle with, you know, the the weight gain that I had to deal with. It was, you know, it's even I feel it now. Like for me, if I don't, you know, work out or go to the gym, you just, you just feel like I just say blah. <laughs> Cause I, that's what I, so I just really wanted to do something for myself and I knew I wanted to get in shape and. You know, it wasn't really till it was actually my my mom and my sister that kind of uh, that got me started. And I I originally even before I even started martial arts, I started at you know this small little gym. It was called Fit Happens. It was kind of like a curves, and that's really how I kind of started into it. And you know, I kind of like found the love of working out just from you know, doing these exercises and it wasn't until one of my best friends, still one of my best friends at the time. And right now that she was like, Hey, let's try kickboxing. And, you know, it wasn't a, a struggle or a push for me to go in the gym. I love the gym. They, they used to make fun of me all the time that they were just going to give me a pee because I was there so often. And it was really that, you know, my, my passion for, you know, hey. just, wanted to do better for myself that started me into to martial arts i just found something that i love and it grew and i just wanted you just wanted more and that's the beauty of of martial arts is like even now after doing it for so many years it's always growing it's always something you can learn and something that you can get better at so you no matter what you'll be 100 years old there'll be some new technique that's going to come out that's you know, to better yourself. Talk to me a little bit about um, what maybe what pieces of advice you would give to someone who is sort of stuck in the situation you were in um, and just doesn't feel like they can get out of um, the state that they're in um, and what steps they can take to um, sort of work to better themselves. You know, even if we, and we all, we all struggle a lot with, you know, the mental and emotional side to, you know, just life in general. It's, you know, an on, ongoing battle to this day, you know, we have good days and we have bad days and, you know, things don't always work Mom, out as, know? as, as Mom, planned. I want you to know I know watch TV. Okay, buddy. I want TV. Okay. And sometimes you have children that just come in randomly. <laughs> but, you know, I just think, you know, just taking and I know more, more than a lot, like I'm, I'm a single mom, like, I pretty much have my kid, you know, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, other than, you know, when he's in school. 
So just trying to find that time, even if it's, you know, half an hour, an hour, anything to do something for yourself. You know, obviously, you know, going for a walk or working out, getting some sort of fresh air, even if you just sit down and, you know, can read a book. It's just finding time for yourself, I think, is more important than anything. Yeah, that's um, just taking the first step is just so important. Having um, a community and uh, people behind you um, to help you do that makes it that much bigger of a difference. Um, yeah, and to, to find, you know, and find someone to talk to, you know, if, you know, you don't have anyone in that, in your circle, you know, like, you know, there's hotlines out there, there's people, you know, things to you can call and people to reach out to. It's, I think it's, it's really important to have that as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, switching gears, we've, um, already met your son, Raphael. <laughs> um, and yeah, you um, might meet him again. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, talk to me about how, um, in the fight game specifically, you have um, changed other than, you know, maybe giving extra motivation to um, fight for him and maybe the change in schedule. What other types of things have changed um, as a result of having a child? Oh, you know what? Patience. <laughs> Patience is the key one, if you haven't noticed. Uh, and, you know, it, that's what, you know, timing, too, because I've come across where I have, I've had more than my fair share of injuries because I was one of those people who constantly overtrained. You know, I didn't take that time to recover or to time myself. Like I, like I was saying, I was like living at the gym and your body needs that time. You know, you're mentally, you need that time. So I think that's one of like the huge blessings that I have is that, you know, now I take that time and I get to be mom. So, you know, it's, I am very fortunate, especially now that he's a little bit older that, you know, he comes to the gym, you know, and I try to be, uh, you know, a great role model for him because I think, you know, exercises and very important in you know a child's life you know just to keep active and he is a ball full of energy non-stop so mm -hmm. you know they need that outlet whether it's martial arts or you know they're playing soccer or basketball but you know it's and to take that time and like we were kind of talking about to do something for yourself and it's it's hard for me to find just time to do something for myself but i will 100 percent do something for him Hey, hey, mom, I want to go, you know, for a bike ride or go to the park. We'll go walk to the park, you know, just that time to, you know, decompress. And that's been a, you know, I, I didn't know how much I needed that until I became a mom. Yeah, that's a, it really, in a way, it clears your head, but it also, you know, gives you a lot more to, to think about and worry about. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> does he... I mean, you said that you take him to the gym. Um, does he really understand what you do for a living? I think so. More so now than he ever has before. Uh, although it is kind of heartbreaking because sometimes he'd be like, Mom, I don't want you to go fight because I want to stay with you. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, you know what? He just He's grown up with it, always around him. Uh, I was bringing him to the gym breastfeeding, you know, since before he could walk, he was going to the gym. So it's just everyday life for him now. And do you think, um, A, that he'll want to pursue martial arts or MMA? And B, will you allow him to do that? Well, I will always allow and support anything that he wants to do. I would like him to at least you know, be somewhat involved in it, but straight up, I'd rather have him be a doctor than, you know, <laughs> a fighter, you know, something with a little more longevity and everything to it. But, you know, if he wants to, you know, compete or if it's something that he really wants to get into, you know, I'm going to be that mom that, you know, probably watch like this because it's my kid, but I will be there. 
tell me um, maybe one or two, just a couple of your favorite stories about or favorite memories so far that you've had with him. Oh, <laughs> or maybe funniest. But probably one yeah. of my favorites was, yeah, before I remember um, at my old gym, bringing him with me a lot and, you know, obviously still in diapers and we would bring the playpen. Sometimes we put the playpen right onto the mat, like while I'm training <laughs> and him, he never liked it because he does not like to be caged. He wants to get into everything and be free roaming and him. Uh, you know, he was kind of upset and he was in there and we are having um, Henry Cejudo came over to our gym to go train and uh, one of his coaches, Eric, and picking him up. And as soon as he picked him up and touched the back, he was like gross green poop all over him. Oh, man. <laughs> Just, there's, a, there's a picture out there somewhere of, you know, exploding diaper of my poor child. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it just, uh, oh my God. And yeah, oh, now, you know, even to see, yeah, because it's never been a huge interest for him, even now. He'd rather, even right now, go to the gym and go play. And it's like a big, you know, jungle gym for him. But the rule is hey, if you want to go to the gym, you got to take, you know, participate in the kids' class. And, but to see, uh, how much he's kind of grown and how much he's learning. And yeah, that's just a huge, a huge part for me, you know, and uh, seeing just, you know, the way they kind of develop and learn. Yeah. That's, uh, that's one of the favorite, I'm not a parent, but I'm, I know my parents say one of the favorite things of being a parent is just watching them grow up and mature and um, just change as a human being. Um, over the course of their life and you know it's you're in know, their it, sounds, it, it does sound kind of you know silly if, if you're not a parent if you don't like even sometimes he'll come home from school and he'll kind of tell me something or tell me some fact or something you learn I'm like wow I'm like I'm like just to, just just the wonderness of you know how much uh, they're growing how much their their brain and you know that they want to learn and things that they're interested in I'm like it's turning into like you know, the uh, like a little adult, you know, some of the things that, mind you, some of the attitude that comes with it as well, but. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that that is not fun, but um, <laughs> the the goods definitely outweigh the negatives, I'm sure. Yes. Um, before I let you go, um, A, tell me how uh, fans can follow you on all your social medias and B, um, Feel free to give any shout outs to sponsors or specific people or anything like that. Uh, well, you guys can always hit me up. I'm probably most active on Instagram, Lexis Davis, MMA. It's my Twitter as well. I got my fan page, my personal page out on Facebook. And huge shout out to who, my guys over at The Resistance and Nutra Shop and Alana's Egg Whites and you know, my guys over at uh, Functional Muscle Fitness and, you know, all, all my teammates around. 